You know, folks, this is my son getting married. This is my youngest boy. This is going to be a special time. I'm excited. I'm going to get a daughter that I never had. I got somebody to take care of the old man in his old age. Who knows? I might even be a granddaddy one of these days, if the good Lord's willing. We have got to plan this thing to the T. I'm the caterer. I'm the father of the groom. I feel like the uh, dishwasher and the yard man. I know I got to be a yard man. It's, it's everything. As a caterer, planning your own wedding is an amazing way to allow you to inspire creativity among your team members. Melanie's wanted to get married on the hill for years. I'm fortunate it was to me. I've been throwing parties all over the southeast for over 40 years, and now I've got my sons working with me. We do over 600 events a year. Appreciate everybody making the effort to come out. We've catered all over the place, and this is how we do it. So part of this process is to, you know, they've got the ideas over here. You figure out which ones we want to try between decor and food. So we won't do anything that's kind of big backdrop on this one. Uh, this I don't want barrels. Right. I don't want any barrels. Not even a popcorn Eddie, barrel? I don't want any barrels. It's repurposed? Yeah. <laughs> I move those barrels every weekend, <laughs> five times a weekend. I think everybody really enjoyed the idea board where the intern, sales team, and catering crew could all put up their ideas. I want people to bring their creativity, you know, to this because this is, uh, <clears throat> this is not a client that's going to complain. You know about it. So we've got a very easy client, and don't get married to any ideas because the day of, the yeah. night before, <laughs> things just totally change. Unless it's that so. day, then you can get married. Yeah, you're yeah. getting married. Yeah. But not to yeah. whatever ideas. Yeah. What does your fiance think about all these ideas? Whatever. That's she's the whatever kind of bride. It's, it's, she's the bride that every man would want to have <laughs> because she's all right with what they are. And since she's married into a business that does this mm -hmm. for a living. She already knows that she's already living it. So, I mean, personally, if I was a bride, hey, all I want to do is get married, get me to dress, let me look good, give me a pedicure, a manicure, a dad, a spa, and you do whatever you want to do. I'm just saying. You just show up. Just show up, that's all. Let me get in the limousine, in the air condition, and walk out of it in the sunset when it's time for me to say I do. I'm just saying. When can you get married if you're in the catering business? You know, it'd be real nice if they could make it to the wedding, especially Daniel. They started figuring it out, and it was going to be in the fall, like in November. Daniel and Melanie decided that they couldn't wait that long. So the next date they had was July the 11th. You ever have been in the South in July for an outdoor wedding? It's not the coolest time of the year. So Daniel comes up with the idea uh, that we'll just have a brunch. We'll do something different than anybody else. Well, you know if Daniel's gonna do it, it's gonna be different. So what's next on there is for you to figure out some of the things that you like, and then we'll start setting up some of these in here and actually do part of the photo shoot with that. Where's this shrimp and grits thing you said? So yeah, you just pick it up as you walk by. It's like a buffet type thing. Interesting. I'm a very tactile person, so mm -hmm. I can get this if you set it up and I can mm -hmm. see it and I can scale it because right. I can feel it, you know. Like I want to go back there right now and, and see what right. that looks like. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's a cool way that we could do this. And then I also want to think, how is it, like Ashley was saying, how is it going to load it, deliver it, unload it, break it back down at the end of the night, put it back, bring it back, and unload it again. Right. Stuff that oh, other, okay. where stuff she started to go away to yeah. so She was like back that. So, so that like, level of anxiety is like the same. Yeah. Like, okay. Daniel's all about presentation and doing everything different. So he's got that armoire over there. We're working on the French station. Ashley, so what are we going to be putting in here at the wedding? We are doing some very sweet things, you know, some pastries, some quiche, and some other things. Figured out how to paint it and fix it up and take the back out and give it the French look, but it's going to have the croissants and the quiche and all that. 
And then we're gonna have the French look. We gotta have the French gates behind it. Oh, Lord, and that's one station. Got to have the shrimp and grits cause that's something that Daniel loves. And he doesn't want it to be the standard shrimp and grits. He wants to get the big praline maker, the big copper pot, and stir the grits up and cook it on site. We're taking the equipment that we already own and using it for something different. You know, what is a praline cooker? It's a big pot and something that gets really hot. So what else can you put in that hot food? As of right now, you're gonna walk through your menu as this stands. Stick it out there and make your best decision so that he can come back and go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. If you're gonna have shrimp and grits, that's New Orleans, so that's fountains. So we can bring the fountain out of the warehouse. But New Orleans says beignets. Why not cook beignets on the oven? So he's down there frying beignets up with the powdered sugar and all that. That's the first here. Melanie Station, which is what I'm like, my, I call it the Urban Station, but Melanie likes health food a lot more than I do, so she goes, that's kind of more like me. I said, fine, we'll name it the Melanie Station. So, uh, but that's like your granolas and all that stuff, but I want it to feel the way the food is, you know, so like yogurt and berries, you know, feels lighter, so I want the glass top table to go along with it, you know. We're going to make it all modern with glass and crystal. And that's going to be the yogurt station with fruits and berries and yogurts. So that's the healthy station. This is all about learning about portioning out and also trying to show Lee a step different from the big things that he's used to. So what we're experimenting with is how do you make things that maybe have more smaller vessels? Bethany did ask if that center base was going to be a large parfait. <laughs> and I know how Lee feels about yeah, even if it's slow, it still needs to look full. I understand about Lee on there, but think about Daniel's expectation. Mm -hmm. He is pushing this to be different than how it's always been. So it does not look, need to look like it's just overspilling because you, you don't have an extra bowl. If you've got an extra bowl in the back, then it doesn't have to be that full. Yeah, I think and it's, it's Daniel's the, way, the key, not Lee's way. The key. Right. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. That it's, Daniel's thought, Daniel's party, not Lee's That's right. party. So he's got three things going there, but we don't have anything Southern. Dad's like, you're gonna have some people just want a big plate of food to <laughs> sit down and eat. So that's why I was like, all right, here you go. We're gonna make the Southern station. So now we're gonna have the big Southern station. Uh -huh. So we're gonna put the flat top over there, serve scrambled eggs, but then also take the biscuits, because biscuits need to be served hot. So we're gonna do those on the flat top too. So you're getting biscuits, Heat it up, okay. eggs, steak, slap that, but then people can go to the two sides and get your gravies. And your this is the, uh, the southern station. And the question you always ask yourself is, from the guest's perspective, how do I get it to my face? All right? Because that's what you're trying to get, whether it's a drink or food. How do I get it to my face? And if you go through that step, you go, oh, I need something for it to put on. Okay, how am I gonna grab this? Is this good for mashed potatoes? That's gonna be harder to eventually get to my face because that's not good for mashed potatoes. Oh, wow, that's good for mashed potatoes. So think through those things, not assuming that Daniel has finished this thought for you. Does it work? So it's taking all this stuff the same way we're creating food, the same way y'all are creating boards and images. We're taking the equipment that we already own and using it for something different. Cool. Good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. All of a sudden, I looked out here, not a thing blooming in the yard. So we go out to Goodness Crows, this uh, local nursery down in Lexington that does indigenous plants. And that's what's supposed to be on the hill. Going down to Goodness Crows because Rick's an old friend, grows indigenous plants, and I like the real things. But I got it all ready. I got the ground ready. I'm going to put something in the front. And I want a little touch of goodness grows in there. Do you see anything you think you could use? Man, you gotta go back there and show me some fast things. And the main hey, thing is I wanna walk around and look at pretty things. All right. Do you All wanna right. walk or you want me to ride you? Either way you wanna go. So we go out to goodness grows. Everything's blooming, everything's beautiful. And I kinda got carried away out there. Golden Jubilee, that's a perennial. A little bit, and I like the, mm -hmm. like that. But look at that. That's awesome. You can get carried away. It's so good looking. It's so much to have. All right, I'll uh, 
think about those I know it'll be fun. Special plants. I think it'll be. I know y'all have a good time. It'll, it'll, it'll be good. good. Well, it was fun. Thank you. Talk Great to you. To you. But you need somebody to work the garden. I'm telling you, this is the very last minute as far as pulling everything together. So this is about what you might expect to see out here today before the wedding. <laughs> Still gotta write vows. Oh, that's good. Just went, just went ring shopping yesterday, three days before the wedding. <laughs> Found one. What? Was that the first time y'all looked? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good commitment. But, hey, you know, we're trying new stuff. We're pushing the thing. We're getting married. I'm looking out from the porch up here. It's full of people. Uh, escort Bobby down. You know, it was amazing when I stepped in the sunken garden to see all those people, uh, layers, and the sun just came in perfect. Everybody was sweating. The fans were going a trillion miles an hour. Be seated. Friends, we're gathered today in the presence of God to give thanks for the gift of marriage, to witness the joining together of Melanie and Daniel, to surround them with our prayers and to ask for God's blessing upon them. In marriage, two people belong to each other, and with affection and tenderness, they freely give themselves to each other. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are always faithful in your love for us. Look mercifully upon Daniel and Melanie, who have come seeking your blessing. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon them, so that with steadfast love they may honor the promises that they make this day. Melanie, understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you affirm your desire and intention to enter into this covenant? If so, please say, I do. I do. Daniel, understanding that God has created, ordered, and blessed the covenant of marriage, do you also affirm your desire and intention to enter into this covenant? I if did. so, please. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Got it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Melanie, repeat after me. I, Melanie, take you, Daniel, as my husband. I, Melanie, take you, Daniel, as my husband. We wanted to write our own vows so it would represent who we are. When Melanie brought up the leaky roofs and sunken boats, she really realized as everybody left, that is who we are. In times of leaky roofs and sunken boats. <laughs> Daniel. I, Daniel, take you, Melanie, to be my wife. I, Daniel, take you, Melanie, to be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. I will be with you as we laugh, giggle, smile, cry, pout, and frown. I will be with you as we laugh, giggle, smile, cry, pout, and frown. I will try to think before I speak. I will try to think before I speak. <laughs> I will try to listen and remember the fact that I said I'd try to listen. I will try to listen and I will try to remember the fact that I said that I would try to listen. <laughs> May I have the rings that you bring to symbolize your promise? Thank you, Rosie. Friends, before God and in the presence of this congregation, Daniel and Melanie have made their solemn vows to each other. Therefore, I proclaim that they are now husband and wife. You may now kiss the bride.
I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Epting. When she came down that aisle and Daniel looked so happy to see my son smiling like that, I always would have wanted either one of the boys to get married on the hill. I mean, that's just selfish. But I would never, ever push that. And for him to say, yes, I'm going to get married on here," And for Melanie, who really is the one to make that decision, for her to want to get married out here, I mean, that, that makes me feel good. The Bloody Mary station was the biggest, sharpest Bloody Mary we've ever made. You know, it's Southern culture party in the morning. It's kind of like tailgating. Uh, great for the out-of-town folks. It was cool to see ideas from the idea board to the rough draft in the warehouse to a final product in the yard. You know, the whole thing just kind of was a blur. I'm always telling the bride and groom and the mom and everybody, you got to look and you got to savor every minute of you because it'll just go and poof. It's just a memory and you won't remember much of it. And that gum it did it to me. I'm out there, I'm sitting there, I'm fanning, and it's over with. Said hello to some people, hugged some people, and we were putting them on the bus, sending them out of here on Jimmy Wilfong's Elvis style bus, and off they go, and we're waving goodbye. You know, we've been telling folks for 40 some odd years that the wedding day just goes by fast, but good Lord, it, I mean, it just goes by real fast. You have no clue.